All right, here we are. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for all being here. Um, Happy New Year, I want to say, and uh, I just do our call to order here. Um, let the record show that all board members are present. And uh, before we begin, I do have a couple of announcements I'd like to make. Uh, the first one is the obvious one that we're virtual tonight. Uh, we decided to go this option out of really an abundance of caution. Uh, community numbers are really high at this point. We felt that the virtual option is the best way to conduct our business in a way that's safe for everyone. That being said, uh, this is not something that any of us uh, expect to be long-term, and hopefully it's really just uh, one and done. Uh, on another note, I'd like to take a moment and congratulate everyone who participated in the, and helped to make the winter concerts such a success. I was lucky enough to witness three of them, and from what I've been told and from what I saw, our students and staff should be very proud of how well they performed. Uh, I'm really especially considering it was the first time uh, on stage for a lot of those children uh, and a uh, first time in a long time for many others. So ultimately, I just want to say congratulations to all. Um, I'm also pleased to announce that the Masaryk Committee will begin in February, and Mr. McCann will speak more about that in our Building and Grounds Committee. Uh, and finally, my last announcement is uh, the board would re really just like to praise everyone for getting our schools open on Monday, uh, despite the COVID challenges. Uh, I, for one, have been teaching virtually all week, and I can't even begin to explain how badly our kids need to be in school. So uh, I just want to say a job well done to everyone involved. Um, at this point, we do have a, a discussion. There's going to be a public hearing on the SMART School Board's Preliminary Investment Plan, Phase 2, uh, and Ms. Pilati is going to take us through that. So if you will, Ms. Pilati. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Tassi, uh, Mr. Tassi, do we need to do the Pledge of Allegiance first? Oh, I skipped the Pledge of Allegiance, didn't I? Uh, yes, you know what? I Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Let's do that, everybody. My fault. Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I think that just proves the point of why being in person is so much more important, because it just <laughs> it normalizes everything. So, uh, all right, once again, uh, back to Ms. Pilati. Thank you, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will be going over the district's final investment plan for phase two of the Smart Schools Bond Act. Brian, thank you. The Smart Schools Bond Act was passed back in November, 2014. The act authorized the issuance of $2 billion of general obligation bonds to finance educational technology and infrastructure to improve learning and opportunity for students throughout the state. These funds never expire and there are no submission deadlines. The categories of eligible capital projects include installing high speed broadband or wireless internet, acquiring learning technology equipment or facilities, constructing or enhancing educational facilities to accommodate a pre-K program or provide instructional space to replace classroom trailers. And lastly, installing high-tech security features in school buildings and on school campuses. The West Isop School District was allocated $2,973,629 for Smart Schools Bond Act funding. In 2016, our district submitted a smart school investment plan for phase one, which consisted of a school connectivity project in the amount of $1,640,487. Phase one included upgrading the network infrastructure and implementing a Wi-Fi infrastructure for wireless access in all classrooms throughout the district. Our plan was approved by the New York State Department of Education on November 28, 2017, and the total cost incurred from phase one of our plan was $1,137,770. We actually received our reimbursement for this amount on June 14, 2019. Therefore, the amount of funds we have remaining for phase two is $1,835,859.
The West Islip School District will utilize the remaining 1.8 million for the installation of a security vestibule in the district administration office, which is located in the Beach Street Middle School. All of the West Islip school buildings have security vestibules at their main entrances. The installation of these vestibules was completed during the 2019-20 school year and was part of the $50 million bond referendum that was approved by the community in May 2015. Security vestibules ensure that all visitors are screened before gaining access to a building. They also provide the district with more time to react should someone unwanted try to enter the building. The district is currently working with our architect, BBS, regarding the scope and design of this project to ensure that the security vestibule and front of the administration building will have the same security and safety features and standards that our other buildings currently have. As you can see on this timeline, our preliminary smart schools investment plan for phase two was approved at the Board of Education meeting on November 23rd. That plan was then posted on the district website on November 24th, where it still remains. There is a link for comments on the district website, as well as an address to mail any written comments. Tonight is our hearing and presentation of the preliminary plan for phase two. The final smart schools investment plan for phase two will be approved at the Board of Education planning session on January 18th. And the final smart schools investment plan for phase two will then be posted on our website and submitted to the New York State Department of Education for review and approval on January 19th. As I mentioned, any of the community members or residents who would like to submit any feedback can do so on our district website. There is a link under the announcements to the Smart School Investment Plan for Phase 2, as well as a link to provide any comments or feedback. There is also the option to send in any handwritten feedback to our district office, to the address listed here. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No, I do not. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Ms. Pilati. You're um, welcome. So at this time, we have not received any question submit, uh, submissions regarding uh, any agenda items. So we'll move uh, into the approval of minutes. And so I need a motion, please, uh, is needed to approve the minutes of the December 9th, 2021 regular meeting. So um, moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, on to personnel with Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Tussey. Uh, may I have a motion for the approval of the personnel agenda as listed in your backup? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That's all we have, right? Okay. So uh, curriculum update, Ms. Morrison. Thank you, Mr. Tussey. May I please have a motion to accept the proposed course title change, Music Technology and Innovation, to Music Technology and Innovation Lab? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. The current uptick in COVID cases is putting a temporary strain on the district's ability to provide homebound instruction to students that are isolated or quarantined because of the virus. Starting today, we pivoted to a modified hybrid model that will allow for quarantined and isolated students at home to observe classroom instruction via their one-to-one -one devices and classroom webcams. Those students will be encouraged to attend extra help upon their return to school and any student that requires additional support thereafter will be accommodated. The district will return to the homebound instruction model for quarantined or isolated students that was established at the beginning of the school year as soon as it is feasible to do so and will be reassessed on a weekly basis as guidelines related to COVID are ever changing. At the Board of Ed meeting in December, concern was noted by residents about alleged harassment of LGBTQ students and what the district planned to do to address this issue. As a follow-up, I met with Dr. Bridgman and Mr. Arini, Director of School Counseling, 
on December 15th. We reviewed data related to behavior incidents involving the LGBT community at the high school since the start of the school year and how those incidents were addressed according to the district code of conduct. It was determined that after the December break, Mr. Arini would meet with the advisor of the GSA to discuss his thoughts in regard to possible issues impacting our students and ascertain suggestions on areas that may have room for improvement. It should be noted that there is regular ongoing communication between Dr. Bridgman, Mr. Arini, and the GSA advisor. On December 18th, Dr. Bridgman then attended a GSA meeting. Sp students spoke very openly about some of the challenges they are facing. After the meeting, Dr. Bridgman did follow up with staff members and students where it was warranted. Dr. Bridgman did assure the students at this meeting that the staff is there to support them. He encouraged them to make sure they are speaking to a trusted adult or a staff member or a teacher if there are bullying or harassment issues that we need to know about so that they can be immediately addressed as per the code of conduct. Um, the students were very appreciative of Dr. Bridgman's um, time at that afternoon and um, he looks forward to attending um, meetings in the future. Dr. Bridgman, Mr. Arini and I have a follow-up meeting scheduled to discuss future steps. In addition, the recent Panorama SEL survey results were carefully reviewed to ensure that concerns expressed by all students were and are being addressed. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. Uh, can I just can I just jump in for one second sure. before you move on? Um, thank you. Um, I just want to note here that you know we need to focus more on um, not just the disciplinary um, involvement and actions once the the incidents happen and tracking down, you know, the perpetrators, if you will, or, um, you know, the, the, the people involved in making sure that, you know, they're um, getting disciplined and what have you. You know, it's a bigger, it's a larger issue, as we all know. And the only way to really um, shine the light on it and get that lens focused in the right way is through education, right? It's through that social emotional learning piece that um, we've been talking about um, that unfortunately has been a little politicized here. Um, but I do think that we really need a concerted effort on all stakeholders, um, the community and the parents and the students to understand what kind of culture uh, we need to um, be embracing and um, supporting across all all school grades from kindergarten all the way up. Um, so, you know, I would be interested in seeing if we could establish some kind of, you know, district wide committee that's going to focus and bring those um, um, players together, you know, parents, PTA, community members, who, whoever is you know, interested in this topic to brainstorm some ideas, whether it be, um, you know, um, special programs brought in for the students or just um, something through guidance, social work, something like that, that is going to really uh, take us back to the place where we once were, where I feel that we, we were a little bit more accepting of everybody, everybody. Okay. And, and that's what we are hoping will come out of the meetings that um, Mr. Arini and Dr. Bridgman are going to have with the advisor of the GSA and the next steps that we can proactively take um, to raise awareness, just as you're speaking to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So all set, uh, Ms. Morrison? Yes. Yes, all right, great. Okay, let's move on to our, our report of the board committees and uh, let's go with Mr. Antonello and the education committee. Okay, thanks Mr. Tussie. Good evening to everybody. Uh, the education committee met on Tuesday, January 4th at the Beach Street Library. All the board members were in attendance except for Ms. La Rosa. Administrators present included Superintendent Bernadette Burns, Assistant Superintendent Don Morrison, Assistant Superintendent Elisa Pilati. The first item discussed was the modified short-term hybrid instruction model set up by the district. This was done in response to the excessive absences of students and teachers due to COVID and COVID procedures. Cameras were turned on in the classrooms to deal with the increased demand and the situation will be reassessed next week, January 14th. 
The second item discussed was the panoramic survey for grades six through eight. A letter was sent home explaining the survey and the dates will be administered. The questions are posted on the district website. The purpose is to assess the social and emotional well being of the kids. The third item discussed was the cancellation of the fundamentals training for teachers next week due to all the trainers having COVID. The, uh, Elementary school report card committee will also meet next week. The hope is to have a new report card design by next school year. Now, the fourth item discussed was the rescheduling of a DEI meeting with Tracy Edwards from BOCES for the board. The fifth item that was discussed was the need to modify 40 hours of community service required for high school students. This also in light of COVID disruptions. I think we're noticing a theme here. Uh, the sixth item, uh, lastly, uh, was the discussion about um, uh, the midterms, and uh, at this point, it seems that the uh, the midterms will be canceled for this year. The meeting adjourned at 7.20 p.m. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Antonello. Uh, and on to the Finance Committee with uh, Mr. McGinnis. Thank you. The committee met on January 4th. The committee members present were myself and Peter McCann. Uh, board members in attendance, Mr. Antonello, Ms. Brown, Mr. Compatello, Mr. Tussi. Administrators present, uh, Superintendent Burns, uh, as well as Ms. Pilati and, and Ms. Morrison. The purpose of the meeting is to review the warrants for the month, discuss pertinent fiscal matters. The meeting was called to order at 715. Uh, the reports the board received or the committee received the following uh, reports, the treasurer's report, for November for school district funds and extracurricular funds, the financial statements for November, the internal claims order report for December, the system manager audit trail for um, December 1st to December 21st, 2021, the payroll certification for the pay period 1210 and 1223. Uh, they were all accepted by the committee. The committee also uh, received and reviewed the warrants. We discussed the uh, following um, Board agenda finance items, approval of budget transfers and approval of a, a donation. So various uh, aluminum sheet plate and steel bars uh, for the well, slice of high school, school engineering and technology valued at approximately uh, $1,500. Uh, approval of surplus damaged furniture and materials at Masera. The approval of 2021-2022 special education contracts for Babylon and Half Hollow Hill School Districts. Uh, approval of 2021 to 2022 health services contracts for East Islip schools for two students. Uh, we also had a discussion item. The uh, Office of the State Controller has finished their first uh, audit area of testing, which was fund balance and reserves. And we'll be meeting with uh, the central administrators on January 19th to discuss the findings. The second area of testing will be Medicaid reimbursements. And the uh, OSC will be issuing two separate reports for each area tested. Uh, the meeting adjourned at 7.22. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. McGinnis. Uh, on to building and grounds with Mr. McCann. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Chessie. The building and grounds committee met on Tuesday, uh, January 4th at um, 7.45 uh, p.m. Uh, all board members, with the exception of Ms. Uh, Ms. LaRosa, were in attendance. Administrators in attendance were Mrs. Burns, Mrs. Morrison, and Mrs. Pilati, uh, along with uh, Mr. Bossi from the Building and Grounds Group. So a lot of projects going on in the, uh, the Building and Grounds. I'll start with some of the construction projects that are, are on, on the, in the works. The Beach Street Generator was sent to the uh, state for approval. Um, we're waiting to hear back from that. The fencing on Montauk Highway, we've got, um, which came out great, I believe, um, Still working on some finishing touches. There's some COVID delays with some raw materials, but that should be finished uh, by the end of the month. Uh, we are potentially looking at um, continuing that fencing along the front of the high school in front of the kind of Paul J. Ballou um, school. Uh, we'll put that up for a discussion uh, as, we, as we move forward. I think that would be a, a positive. Um, we're looking at uh, ACs in the cafeteria. Uh, we're, we're using grant money to have that done. Hopefully that done for May. So I know we've had a lot of talk about air conditioning overall in the entire district. So we're making progress. Uh, ACs in the cafeterias hope to be done by May. Uh, the next step would be ACs in the auditorium. Again, with grant money, we're working on um, a proposal uh, installed by the summer, hopefully working in September when we come back. 
Uh, we are looking at exploring and uh, options for uh, ACs in all of the rooms, uh, and that's still an exploratory phase. So um, we'll have more details and uh, um, dollars associated with that uh, later in the year. Uh, the fitness center in the high school, uh, the renovation should be done during the uh, February break, barring any um, uh, delays, but we should have that done. Paul J. Blue parking lot, we're also exploring um, expanding and repaving that. Uh, we do have uh, the Macera committee. Uh, all of the um, uh, committee members were notified that they were accepted for the committee uh, um, last month. We will have our first committee meeting, uh, again, barring any COVID related delays on February 16th. The district has employed Kathy Blackburn. She's an independent uh, facilitator who has experience in uh, facilitating projects like this. It was a recommendation through BOCES. We've interviewed her as a board. We feel an independent facilitator will help bring out uh, all of the options that are available. The role of the committee is to do the homework, look at all the options and make recommendations to, to, to the, uh, the, the board. Uh, and that's what, what the plan is uh, starting with the meeting on the 16th. Notifications will go out for that. We're looking to do two sessions, one in the half of the group in the AM, half the group in the PM, uh, but look for that if you are on that committee and we'll have more information on that uh, as we go along. We did look at currently um, taking a look at all the indoor facility permits that we've got out there with all the outside groups. As we all know, our main goal here is the health and safety of the students and all of the, uh, uh, all of the staff. With the COVID surge, um, we're taking a look at the indoor facilities. We're, we're looking to postpone rather than cancel events. That's our mission here to keep all events uh, live. The indoor permits that we're looking at, we've got some big activities coming up. We've got some dance programs and the indoor soccer tournament. We are looking at um, making sure that, that if, if possible to hold those events, that the, they're behold, um, follow the safety protocols that'll keep us safe. We have to have, you know, continued discussion on that as we, uh, we take a look at all the programs. Because again, our main mission is keep the, the students in the schools, keep the school, schools open, especially during this most recent surge of COVID. Um, the solar pa pa panel project is underway. Um, we are, um, we've got uh, Bayview, Okanak, and Man Manitech. The panels are up. We're just waiting to connect that. Uh, then we are starting with the middle schools and then we'll work our way to the high school. Again, we're doing that so that we're not, uh, interfering with any um, teaching time that goes on. So we're trying to do that, but that project is moving along nicely and that'll give a net, um, a net positive to the district over the life of those panels. Um, that's what we have um, from, from the building and grounds. And I know there's a lot there. So if anyone has any uh, questions, um, feel free to, uh, to reach out. All right, thank you uh, very much for that uh, detailed report, Mr. McCann. Uh, and before I move into the special ed co uh, committee with Ms. Brown, I think uh, Mr. Antonello just wanted to make uh, a correction on something he said. Mr. Antonello? Yeah, I just uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, fundamentals was going to be, uh, fundamentals training was going to be canceled next week. I meant foundations, not fundamentals. As in reading my notes is fundamental, and I messed that up, it should be foundations. <laughs> That's okay. I forgot the pledge, so we all make mistakes. That's okay. Um, all right. Thank you. And uh, like I said, on to Ms. Brown with the Special Education Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tussi. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. And now for my lengthy update. Uh, the Committee on Special Education met on January 5th, 2022, via teleconference at 8.30 a.m. In attendance were myself, board member Ron McGinnis, administrators Dawn Morrison and Jean Dowling, we discussed special education placements and the fact that planning is underway for annual reviews. The meeting adjourned at 8.45 a.m. Thank you. Trying to mute myself. There we go. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Uh, and uh, finally, our last committee report is Health and Wellness Committee with, uh, once again, Mr. McCann. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. The Health and Wellness Committee met virtually, as we have been doing, on Tuesday, January 4th at 9.30. Members were present were Mr. Horan, Mr. Rabano, Ms. Russo, Mrs. Canestra, Mrs. Berline, Mrs. Marshall, Mrs. Curley, myself, Mrs. Steinwells, uh, Mrs. Elefante, Mrs. Seepy, Mrs. Fogarty, uh, Mrs. Voris, and uh, Mr. Soto. Uh, we discussed um, the newsletter that's coming out. Uh, we're looking for members to submit articles for the anticipated February mailing. So if there are any other topics that 
are out there broadly. If you'd like to do that, you can get email those to Tim Horan. He is uh, coordinating that. We're putting out the health and wellness newsletter. We're anticipating a lot of um, you know, social and emotional uh, articles in that, obviously with the effects of COVID. So we wanna make sure that we address what we have along with, uh, with uh, cell phone use. Um, so any other topics that may, please feel free to email him. Uh, we're looking at uh, a spring into wellness event, uh, tentatively scheduled for March 7th. Um, uh, we held this two years ago. Uh, I attended, I thought it was a great event. We had, it was open for students and parents. It was mostly uh, K through eighth grade. And we had different um, uh, sections that we went to. We had a mindfulness seminar. We did art therapy. We did music and we did yoga. Uh, it was a great activity for um, uh, the parents and students to get together on, a, on an evening and really enjoy um, some of the mindfulness uh, activities that we have. So we're looking to do that uh, on March 7th. Um, the district-wide PSI Love You Day members supported a $500 donation to the high school senate to purchase PSI Love You Day flagpoles to be displayed through the community. Um, the essential pantry needs is up and running at each school. We can contact the social worker at any time for information for anyone who is uh, needing of uh, essential pantry needs. Uh, the New York State Department of Mental Health uh, Crisis text line got five to seven four one seven four one to chat with a health professional is open. And uh, the COVID hotline is at 311. Our next meeting is Tuesday, February 8th, 9.30 a.m. That's his, that's his virtual meeting. So if anyone wants to be involved, again, you can email Tim Moran and be part of that group. So thanks for, um, we'll see you at the next meeting and um, uh, the meeting um, adjourned to 10.30. All right, thank you, Mr. McCann. Uh, let's move into financial matters and business items with Ms. Pilati. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. The Treasury's report for the month of November had a beginning balance of $30,904,019.51 and an ending balance for the month of $49,582,709.63. May I have a motion for the approval of budget transfers 4115 through 4127 in the general fund and transfer 4120 in the capital fund? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of surplus damaged furniture and materials from the Macera School? So moved. So moved. Second. Discussion? All and in Mr. favor? Mr. Tussie, just on, on that point, just a clarification point that we, we had discussed this at, at the, at the uh, meeting on Tuesday. And a lot of that is were supplies that were brought uh, when we emptied out some of the classrooms to make room for space uh, during the the COVID time to make social distancing. So a lot of that was some older uh, equipment that that was uh, it, currently in schools that we moved to Masera. So that's that, that's kind of what that equipment's about. Okay, thank you, Ms. McCann. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of a health services contract with East Islip Union Free School District in the amount of $2,051.96? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of 2021-22 special education contracts with Babylon and Half Hollow Hills Central School District? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion for the approval of a resolution related to the donation of various aluminum sheets, plates, and steel bars from CPI Arrow Structures, Inc. that was donated to the West Isop High School Engineering Technology Department and has a value of approximately $1,500. So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank uh, you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pilati. Um, the President's report, I, I really said everything uh, in the announcements that I, I would report on, but I just want to add that I was really happy to hear uh, Ms. Morrison's report about the follow-up with the student harassment. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Ms. LaRosa for her comments. Uh, and really with, with what she said, and I would second her sentiments. Uh, I think there were some good ideas there. Uh, and I'm happy to hear that we are trying to uh, 
make any uh, corrections or fix things or make things better for, for everybody. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to introduce Ms. Burns with the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. I would like to welcome everyone back and wish you all a happy new year. Uh, much has gone on in the last few weeks, in, in this last week alone. Today, the district received revised guidance from the Suffolk County Department of Health regarding isolation and quarantine of students and staff. Um, you may recall that the CT, uh, CDC makes recommendations which the State Department of Health can or may not choose to adopt. Um, once the state DOH adopts specific guidance, then um, Suffolk County evaluates that guidance and determines whether it is appropriate for our region. It's a big state, so of course, each local department of health is charged with caring for um, you know, its stakeholders, those stakeholders being uh, the towns and communities in the region. So um, tomorrow, everyone will receive a Parent Square message uh, in essence, this updated guidance reduces an isolation period for positive cases to five days from 10 for both students and staff, as long as certain conditions are met. Um, and, and those conditions are very, very specific, not the least of which is, um, you know, the wearing of a well-fitted mask, proper physical distancing, et cetera, all of those things that we've been implementing in our classrooms. Quarantine guidance has also changed, but it's based upon vaccination booster status. So we will be implementing a change to these protocols commensurate with um, the county guidelines, and we will um, put it in place on Monday, January 10th for our students. That will give us a little bit of time to organize, uh, determine who might be eligible, uh, because again, not everybody would be eligible, um, but we're hoping for tomorrow um, to be able to do that. Therefore, if your child was directed to isolate for 10 days recently, but has completed five days by Monday and meets the other requirements, um, which I will articulate in my parents' square message, um, not coughing, fever free, no runny nose, they may return to school um, on Monday or earlier than originally anticipated. So we'll get that information out to you tomorrow with the specifics. Surveillance testing is also a tool we are hopeful will prevent some of the transition uh, transmission of COVID-19 in our school buildings. The parents of approximately 3,000 of our 4,100 students have taken advantage of obtaining the test kits thus far. If you have not already requested and picked up your home testing kit, you may do so at your earliest convenience. In our memo, we did say they would be available in schools through tomorrow, but your home school uh, will have those testing kits all through next week as well until they're gone. And I would just remind everybody to, when you make the request, uh, the kits will be delivered to the home school of your youngest child in the district. Uh, bear in mind that the district has been allocated one kit per enrolled student. So until we receive additional kits, we cannot honor requests for replacements or second kits. We do realize that some of our uh, residents have students in private schools or in other placements uh, throughout the island. And we did explain to um, you know, those who have provided us with the kits, that being Eastern Suffolk BOCES in this case, that there are other students for whom we want to make sure they receive test kits. They're not members of our, they're not enrolled, they are members of our district. They're not enrolled in our district schools, but certainly we want to make sure the kits get into their hands as well. So we're looking to obtain additional kits in that regard. I think it should be coming from BOCES directly to those other um, school district entities. And finally, I'm certain you all have noted um, that the weather forecast for tomorrow currently calls for four to six inches of snow, all of which is supposed to school, uh, fall just as our students and staff will be arriving. So the district will operate on a delayed opening, a two hour delayed opening tomorrow. Uh, you may recall that in the district's adopted 2021-22 school calendar, there are two emergency closing days built in. Therefore, should we need to close tomorrow or any future day, we will have a traditional snow day for the first two closures. But for now, tomorrow we will have a two hour delayed opening. And we've sent out a parent square message and emails to, in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. All right, thank you uh, very much. I'm sorry. Excuse me, can I just ask a question? And maybe I missed it. I'm not sure because my phone is 
low enough with the closure. <laughs> um, did we say how many students or, or um, learning community are out with COVID? Do we have a, a percentage of, of yeah, so we've been, of students, um, we've been keeping track on any particular day, it's running between 50 and 20% out, absent. Not as high as we would have anticipated. And the staff? Um, I would ask um, Mr. Taylor, again, I don't know, maybe 70 people. We, we've had more people out on Fridays in May and June and December, certain times of year than right now. But um, But this is more widespread because it's affecting every every group, our custodial staff, our uh, aides, TAs. Um, Mr. Taylor, could you speak to that? I know you have the most current information. Uh, yes, uh, we have about, um, excuse me one second, um, approximately about 15% of our staff is out. Okay, and um, Mr. Taylor, you're able to, of course, cover classes, our sub list, that we've been growing it all year. Um, yes. So we're able to- We have had no issues things. with- uh, okay with having subs available or covering classes um, at the secondary level with, with other teachers. So we've Thank been you. able to keep our buildings open safely. Thank you, great. And I, I would like to credit our administrative and teaching um, educators for stepping up and making sure that that happens internally. I think we're in a better place than a lot of other districts. So we're very grateful for that. Okay, all right, thank you again, Ms. Burns. Uh, at this time, we're gonna uh, move into the unique uh, public speaking uh, questions and answers. Um, Mr. Tussie, uh, I'm sorry, before you do that on the agenda, there's notice and reminders for um, other board member information. If I could just take a moment. Um, sure. I would just like to um, express um, my apologies for missing um, a couple of meetings in this past. I've been contacted by a number of community members um, asking why. Um, and so, and also expressing good wishes to my husband who underwent some um, heart surgery in early December, which kind of took me out of the game because my focus was making sure that everything was good there. And I wanted to thank those community members sincerely um, for asking about him all as well. And hopefully I will not have to miss many more meetings for the remainder of the year. Thank you. Well, thank you, and we all uh, hope that your husband is having a speedy recovery. He's doing well. You might see him walking down Udall Road. He's hitting right. the three-mile mark every day. So. I hope so. Hunk all right. Wave, hunk and wave to him. Very good. we Will do. Thank um, you. And Mr. Tussie, yeah, I, I know everyone, everyone's mentioned that. I'd like to also mention thanks to everyone for getting those schools open on Monday. I know, I think I said a few meetings ago that you know, in, in this COVID time, it's, you know, it's every, it's almost like every community for itself. And this community really s stands up and gets the kids back to school where they belong and where they need to be. You know, we know the remote teaching is not ideal for anyone. So testament to everyone, the teachers, administration, everyone who's been pitched in on this because uh, it's not true. As Ms. Mrs. Burns says, it's not true. You know, you look at what's going on in even this city of Chicago, we're not that. We are open and thank you. Thank you from my family, my kids, this is where they need to be. And uh, it's been a crazy week and we'll end with a snowstorm, but we're back and I thank everyone for that. <laughs> All right, anyone else? All right, very good. All right, so we had uh, several questions that were emailed in uh, and I'd like to uh, read the questions uh, and who they were from. So Carmela uh, Caminito, uh, she emailed, next week, all homebound students will have the option to turn on virtual learning during their quarantine time. Thanks for opening this platform for our kids. My question here is, why can't this be done moving forward? Don't you feel some form of teaching is better than nothing at all? Is this pushback from teachers? Uh, Mrs. Morrison, do you wanna take that one? Absolutely. So as has been affirmed throughout the past two years dealing with COVID, students learn best when they are physically present in school. And I think, Mr. Tussie, you alluded to that earlier in regard to your own, own situation there. Um, in the absence of that, we have found that the best way for our students to learn is to receive small group or direct homebound instruction from our teachers. Thus far this year, the district has been fortunate, um, thanks to the tireless efforts of our staff, to be able to provide that small group or one-to-one -one homebound instruction for students that are quarantined or isolated. Um, 
in most cases, many of the students have had the opportunity to work with their own teachers. This has proven to be much more effective for students than viewing the classroom environment via the cameras and the one-to-one -one devices. And it also reduces disruptions to classroom instruction. Um, so as noted in the curriculum and instruction update, the district plans to return to uh, the model proven to be most successful and effective for our students, um, which is a small group or one-to-one -one homebound instruction as soon as we have the ability to do so. We're just finding that that is much more effective um, than having the cameras on in the classrooms. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Morrison. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Caminito also asked, another question I have is the new hires of subs slash student teachers. Are they all certified? Uh, they all certified teachers. How are these candidates vetted out? What qualifications are required here? Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm gonna turn to you on for that one. Uh, yes, Mr. Tussin. Um, no, all of the teachers that we have just hired as subs, all of the substitute teachers we have just hired, they are not all certified teachers. Um, due to the shortage of subs uh, across New York, the State Education Department changed its regulations to allow districts to hire individuals with high school diplomas if the district has done a good faith effort to hire certified teachers. Um, we have done a good faith have effort. Um, we have an open posting on the district website and on the online application system for educators. Um, we have hired all certified teachers who have applied to the district. Um, this most recent group of subs um, we hired are uh, all enrolled in four-year college programs. Um, many are majoring in education. Um, all candidates' resumes are reviewed by me, and I meet with all candidates before they go before the board for approval. Um, no sub or any uh, employee works in a classroom or in this district until they have had their fingerprints cleared by the state education board. All right, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, and her last question, this is Ms. Ke uh, Mrs. Caminito again. Uh, if a test to stay protocol comes into play, I will be withdrawing my kids from school. No reason to test healthy children. So it's not really a question as much as it's a statement. Uh, and I think Ms. Burns, you might want to uh, respond to this one. Yeah, so the current test to stay guidelines have been very confusing to some people and they only affect students and staff who are identified as close contacts in the school setting. We have very, very, very few people identified as close contacts in the school setting um, because our educators have done a really terrific job of ensuring that everyone is aware of and following the protocols. So this, um, guidance, this protocol will affect very few of our students and staff, and it would really be done on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not a broad-based solution to anything. Okay, thank you. Um, this next question, it's actually a series of questions. I'm going to read them all. Uh, they're from uh, Mr. Marmo. Uh, I'm going to read them all. I think they're all kind of connected. Uh, and then again, Ms. Burns, these, I'm going to direct these to you. Okay. Uh, can a resident place a proposition on the May ballot? What is the procedure and deadline to do so? What is the scope of what qualifies as a proposition? Said another way, what is permitted and what is not permitted? And what, if any involvement, will the district have in this process? Is there any documentation in place with the district or the New York State Department of Education uh, that would allow so? Okay. So, um, yes, a resident can place a proposition on the May ballot subject to school board review. Um, to do so, the pro protocols for submitting a proposition for consideration by the voters is expressed in district policy 1260-1260, and petitions relating to an annual election must be filed not later than 60 days preceding the election at which the proposition is to be voted upon. Um, the basic parameters, um, the proposition needs to be feasible, uh, unambiguous, the purpose must fall within the power of the voters um, and specify an amount if an expenditure of money would be required. And if it does require funding and the expenditure of money would force the um, uh, proposed budget to exceed the tax levy cap, the budget vote would then require approval by 60% of the voters. Um, the school board makes the determination about whether a particular proposition is appropriate for placement on the ballot. 
and um, any information can be provided upon request to the district clerk, but I cannot speak to what is available um, through the New York State Department of Education. I hope that answers all the questions. It, yeah, it sounds like it did. Have we ever had a resident um, request a, uh, yeah. the, the proposition? Yeah, we had a couple of years ago, we had, um, they changed the voting, uh, uh, the way we vote on board members. So they did a petition, they had to get a certain number of signatures um, to, it, it, it never, right now it's um, an at-large vote where if you have three seats up and six people are running, the top three vote getters get a vote. So they changed it to be that at-large. It used to be um, a, you, you owned the seats. So somebody would run against me, somebody would run against, against Mr. McCann, and you would be one-to-one. -one. So there was a group of um, uh, community members who wanted more of an at-large so that, you know, you didn't have that, I guess, direct competition, I don't know. So they um, did a petition, they got the signatures, which then allowed them to put that proposition on the ballot. It got approved on the ballot. And then the next cycle of elections, that's how we now have at-large voting. Correct, that? That's exactly right. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, question uh, number three came from Farron Phillips. Uh, I was wondering if you could clarify for me the reason as to why the Board of Ed meeting was suddenly switched to a virtual meeting. Uh, yeah, I guess that was something I addressed uh, in the announcements. And um, I'll just start to review what I said. It was really just an abundance of caution. Uh, it is not something that we want to continue long term. We're hoping, as I said, it's just one and done. But the, the numbers have been so high. Uh, we just thought that this would be uh, an opportunity to keep everyone healthy and safe uh, and keep our schools open, which is what our number one goal is. And our final question uh, came from Catherine Abentello. Uh, I'd like, I would like to begin by thanking the board for making the wise decision to hold this month's meeting virtually and with the latest Omicron wave. Following up of the concerns I voiced during last month's meeting, I would like to know specifically what steps the board and or administration have taken to address them since uh, that time. Uh, that's exactly what uh, Mrs. Morrison addressed in her curriculum update. Um, I, Mrs. Morrison, is there anything else you want to add or do you just, I think you said everything in, in the curriculum update and uh, I thought it really covered all her concerns. The only thing I'd like to add is that Dr. Bridgman, Mr. Arini and I plan on meeting again next week um, so that we can continue our plan of action going forward and do some of the things that Mrs. LaRosa had um, alluded to when she spoke. Okay. okay. Um, I just want to take another minute just to wish everybody uh, a happy new year. We hope you uh, had a, a very nice time with your families. Hope you uh, celebrated the new year. Uh, and we're looking forward to really doing what we do best, which is just, uh, you know, maintain the education system here and, and, and keep our kids in school and keep them safe and keep them happy and keep everything going. So hopefully uh, we could start moving in that direction or at least continue. Uh, and let's hope these numbers start to go down. So with that being said, uh, I'd like uh, a motion to adjourn to executive decision, uh, session where uh, the board will discuss personnel negotiations and litigation. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, hello sure. everybody. Uh, we have reconvened back to public uh, session and there is a motion on the table. Ms. Pilati, you'll make that motion? Yes. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the West Islip Union Free School District hereby suspends with pay the employee reference in executive session as employee A, effective January 7th, 2022. I'll move. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And that is the only uh, table of business that we have. So at this time, I'd like to motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.
Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.